and Tracy. Item 10 is the, and Justine. This is the Community Facilities Network Plan uh, Action and the Progress Report. Um, so I will move in the first instance if somebody second this particular one. Aye. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Councillor Casey and Tena Oh, thank you. Uh, kia ora tātou. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the Mayor, the Chair and elected members and the Director of Customer and Community Services here today uh, and also uh, members of the IMSB. Kia ora. Uh, we are here to provide a progress update on the Community Facilities Network Plan Action Plan. Uh, the recommendation is that you receive the report, so it's quite straightforward. We have a brief presentation to share. It's um, up on the screen. This is a summary of attachment A, and attachment A is the summary of the report, so it's a summary of a summary, and we will be brief. Uh, uh, if it's okay with you, uh, the, um, Alf, we will go through the presentation and take questions at the end. It's okay? Yep. Uh, the Community Facilities Network Plan Action uh, Network Plan was adopted in 2015. The scope of the plan includes five types of community facilities. Uh, arts and culture, community centres, libraries, pools and leisure, and venues for hire. The companion action plan to the network plan outlines and prioritises the projects that will be undertaken to give effect to the aspiration of the network plan. Every three years, the action plan is reviewed and updated to recognise progress, review priorities of existing actions and assess potential new actions. In April 2019, the Environment and Community Committee approved the revised action plan. We have a commitment to report regularly to committee on the action plan. The, um, the revised action plan was adopted in 2019 in April. We did have a report ready in April to come and then we went into lockdown. So here we are with the um, our annual update in October. Since the network plan and its first action plan was adopted in 2015, we've followed through on our commitment to focusing resources on a mandated programme of work, and that's evidenced by the progress we've made. The focus of our work continues to be guided by the pri priorities in the action plan in this constrained environment, which has been brought about by the impact of COVID-19 and the resulting economic slowdown. Our community facility network is variable in distribution and quality due to historic development patterns and investment. Having a roadmap for investment in community facilities and an, and an approved set of priorities through the action plan enables us to be strategic in our approach to provision. To ensure we get the most value from investment, investigation of actions follow a consistent approach with a primary focus on identifying and understanding customer reach and impact, alongside consideration of network provision, growth and demographics. This is to ensure we understand the option options available to deliver a service and that any investment in facilities effectively delivers on the service requirements of communities. Priority area-based actions support a focus of effort on Council's commitment to ensuring existing assets are fit for service. And these actions also help us to respond to growth and potential gaps in the network. Determining customer need is a first step in all our investigations rather than an assumption that facility provision is required. 
So understanding community needs can identify ways of delivering services that reduce reliance on capital investment. Um, a good example of this is an action related to um, that was in the Waitemata local board area, and it was the the action involved investigating options for a an asset that wasn't in service to bring it into the service por portfolio. And the result of the investigation was not that a new asset was needed, but that perhaps access to more space would provide those services. And the result of that was um, an independent creator creative spaces broker to help people access space rather than adding an asset to the network. Uh, the other thing that we try to do in implementing the action plan is to align um, our investigations with development opportunities to help reduce the impact on rates. And the, uh, an example of that is Manga Kiki Tamaki local board area. We're working with Panuku Development and Tamaki Regeneration Company to explore options such as optimisation as a primary funding source for delivery of services. Our work on the uh, Community Facilities Network Plan Action Plan has confirmed five actions that require investment consideration for the community portfolio, as outlined in this table here. These items will be considered as part of the 2021 to 2031 long-term plan. And that's the presentation. Justine, anything from you? No. No? No, thanks, Al. No, can So I'm going to open it up for questions only and, and, and then comments, and um, especially with this particular item. Councillor Mulholland first, Kia and ora. then Councillor Cooper. Kia ora, Chair, and um, I'd like to acknowledge the staff. We um, are familiar with each other. Uh, my question, and I just would like to preface it with um, a little bit of information so that we're clear on what my question is. Um, attachment B for your records, page 53, uh, faux projects. Um, I, I do realise that there has been significant work done by the staff and, of course, I'm a great supporter of um, caring for our community and um, ensuring that we do the best that we can and given the um, climate, economic climate, but also to ensure that our community have great facilities because they are well used in Tamaki Makaurau. Um, so I'll just have it on record prior to my question, Chair, that I object to the word pending for the Fai Local Board Aquatic Facility because it goes without saying I do need to do that for the amount of time and energy many people have put into that. And I would just refer also to the old Waitakere days where they worked tirelessly to try to get an aquatic, aquatic and um, leisure facility, which would be a regional facility. So just going to decide to um, post a couple of questions for the information of people and for the public that may be interested. Um, you know, what were the um, uh, page 53 pending action result from item 122 and action resulting from 123? I acknowledge, Tracy. Um, kia ora, thank you for your answer. I really appreciate it, but I think it's important public understand that it relates to um, the graphs that are in the red box in a, attachment A and the of course, I'm very, very grateful for the work that's continuing at Avondale um, that has been underway for some time and well um, deserved and needed in the community. You also highlight the reason that it's in progress um, is given the situation of the budget, which we all understand, and the economic slowdown. I haven't seen it in the housing market, but anyway, maybe I've got it a bit wrong there. Um, and of course the Ollies, which affects everyone. So um, I agree um, that, and I accept those. However, my question is, and um, I think it's, well, I think it's really important because the public in our area, the whole of the area, have been, you know, working on this for some time, and we've had substantial um, submissions on this particular piece of work. Have you taken into consideration the offer from the Avondale Racecourse with regards to, and I'm very clear on that, and it hasn't been made public, those letters, um, but have you given um, any consideration as to the potential 
um, opportunity to work alongside the Avondale Jockey Club with regards to land and um, being able to progress this facility. So we need to be mindful that there are aspects of that, of course, in confidentiality, Chair, um, but I understand there is an opportunity and has it been taken into consideration to come to this decision of pending. Kia ora, thank you. Kia ora, through the Chair, thank you for the question. Um, with regards to the Whau Aquatic Centre, we are working with Panuku and with Community and Social Policy to understand what the options are in terms of location for the Whau Aquatic Centre, um, and that does include um, Avondale. At the moment, the status of pending is merely um, reflecting the decision through the emergency budget that the Ollie won't be progressed in this financial year, but when we're able to pick it back up again, that we will continue on consideration of locations. Got a supplementary chair. Can you just advise me, please? And I am asking for your assistance and guidance on this. Given standing orders, how can I um, note, you know, that I would rather see it move from pending to action? Um, can I have a notation on that? Could you just guide me, please, on that? Just so the public are aware that um, the people of the foe and, and hopefully the other board areas strongly support this progressing. Can you give me advice on that? Can we note it? How does that work under standing orders? At this stage, the advice in regards to that is no. Um, but I, I, I think from, from, our, from our perspective anyway, it's, it's, it's on, taken on board in, in regards to it. Um, so the noting itself won't, won't, won't end up um, um, happening. Um, but I think, it, again, in regards to anything that, that relates to, to, to projects that have been pushed um, uh, into the next uh, two years, is, is to end up going through again, um, and I don't want to put it on um, Councillor Simpson or Henderson, but, but those discussions will end up moving forward uh, around it. Kia ora, so, Chair. Yeah. I've already um, indicated that to the Chair of Finance that I'd okay. like it to progress. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. OK, thank you. Uh, Councillor Cooper and then Watson on questions, please. It may be similar question to Councillor Mulholland. Um, so I do now understand that it's pending doesn't mean it's yes or no, it's just put off for a while. Um, has there been consideration given to placing the pool in the faux local or the faux ward um, on that sort of border of different local, like Albert Eden? Because I'm just looking at, what I'm looking at is the Mount Albert pool that now is not fit for purpose just seems interesting to me. You wouldn't put one in Mount Albert and then put one in Avondale and New Lynn, too close. So has there been consideration of having the faux um, pool be the catchment for that wider area like Mount Albert as well? Because it is right next door. Ju just as the northwest one will be for Upper Harbour, Rodney and Henderson Massey. Would you like me to answer through the yeah through the chair? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, when we when we commence the location analysis, that will be part of the, that process is understanding the implications on the network. So that work's not underway at the moment, but it certainly will be taken into account. Just like our colleagues in community and social policy consider the network impact when they're doing the work on. So the you look at it at a kind of a sub regional at a network level. Thank yeah. you. And, and just, and just, uh, just answer, man. Don't need to. Yeah, yeah. I just go ahead. Councillor Watson and Councillor Koo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, my question comes uh, as part of this commentary on the constrained environment too, and particularly the the little list of um, actions that are have been identified for uh, investment. In, over this uh, long-term plan that's coming up, and, and it goes to um, the flexibility that we're we're adopting and the kind of cross-council family discussions that I assume that are taking place. And if I just take the example of the um, Albany Village 
library, which is incredibly constrained, and with the, you know, as, as you'll be well aware. Um, so, do, do we, in instances like that, look at existing um, council facilities? And I think, in this instance, like something like the stadium, Albany Stadium, which is basically the centre of the hub that's developed there with the recreation centre uh, and the pool and all the rest of it. So do we do we do that? Do we look at existing facilities that just would require a fit out and you're, you're off? Kia ora, through the Chair, thanks for the question. Um, yes, we do look at, at existing council facilities. We go through quite a broad process uh, when we determine that a facility is required to understand what the options are within the council asset base and on the market, but we also really importantly consider other options with regards to leasing as well. So we're quite open-minded to start with, and a key factor is to consider the best location to meet the service requirements and to make sure that that service is fully accessible to the community. So, so location comes first and first and foremost. Okay. So, uh, at the moment, uh, just to continue that theme, you know, we're engaged in a pretty um, comprehensive asset sale uh, program, and I, and I think of instances uh, if we're talking about libraries where there's incredibly constrained uh, libraries. There's we know library is now best part of 30 million bucks if you if you build a new library. You know, there'll probably be more now. That was the last one. So in an instance where we're selling council-owned facilities, and I'm thinking here like the Oriwa um, council offices, just along the road there's a library that's you know, way past its use-by date. Council's going to have to invest a lot of money basically in a new one or come up with a new lease. We, are, you, are you consulted in terms of then ready-made solutions? So we sold that for, for $15 million dollars. To build a new library is going to be at least double that. Um, it could very easily have been um, converted. So is your part of council involved in these asset sales that come along from time to time? Because it doesn't seem to be too apparent on the, on the ground when I look at you know, that stunning, startling example, uh, at least. Thank you, through the chair. Um, so. I can speak specifically, I guess, to Oriwa Library. From So yes, we work a lot with our corporate property colleagues. Uh, we also do a lot of work with Panuku to understand their programme of work and make sure that we've got good alignment. As Tracy said, that presents opportunities for us to consider. So it's really important that we're well in sync in terms of the work that we're doing. Um, there is work underway uh, looking at Oriwa Library at the moment, um, and that's also looking to consider the Oriwa Community Centre as well. Um, and as Tracy signalled earlier, one of the important things that we're looking at through that work is how we can apply optimisation to try and make sure that we're reducing the impact on rates as much as possible. So where we have those opportunities, we certainly look into them. Th th thank you for that, Mr Chair. And I, and I think you know that's a, a very valid point for us to consider going forward, and I'll, and I'll certainly be referring that when it comes to the sports investment fund, because in a number of instances we have existing facilities that can very easily be converted. Uh, we can't convert them when we sell them. Yep, no problems at all. And Councillor Coombe, and we've got six others after that. Kia ora matua, tēnā kōroa. Um, I'm trying to make sense of the climate impact statement. And I, if I understand correctly, I, mean, I appreciate that this is a progress report around an action plan and it's guiding our investment priorities. So I don't understand, well, my question is, how is it possible that there can be no identified climate implications for the delivery of the action plan investigations when applying a climate lens needs to be done to all our activities. We identify as a climate emergency, we now have a climate plan, so doesn't there need to be a whole sense check in terms of is the action plan properly aligned before we get to the second stage, which is saying that we won't do a climate impact assessment until we get to the actual development of the business case? Isn't that too late? We should be doing it in terms of our, an input into our prioritisation. So that, that might be a question for um, Claudia as well. <laughs> 
uh, kia ora through the chair. So um, I guess what we're trying to signal is that um, the network plan, action plan, signals really early investigations. So what we're saying is the plan in itself doesn't have any climate impact, but on every, on every initiative that we're looking at, we consider all, all impacts, including climate. The plan also really importantly signals a commitment to looking after our existing network, and that's based on, you know, on a fundamental assumption that actually we need to manage our investment really well in what we've already got and make sure that we're creating a sustainable network. So our initiatives and our investigation into those initiatives definitely prioritise that. So the, the implication section of the report is signalling that the plan in itself doesn't have a climate impact, but the initiatives that result from the plan do. Does that help? Um, not really, because my question is, why would we not re-evaluate whether the action plan is fit for purpose now that we've declared a climate emergency? Sorry, thank you for the clarification. So um, the network plan was adopted in 2015, um, and it was signalled then that it was due for review within five years, so that's around now. Uh, so we'll be working with our community and social policy colleagues to look at um, planning that on the work programme, and that is a perfect opportunity for that to be taken into account. Thank you, and I guess the point I'm making is that there can't not be any climate implications. There has to be. Every, every, at every point in our decision making there are implications Absolutely. because it will down the track. So I think that just needs to be clarified in sure. terms of the report. Okay. Thank mm. you. Thanks. We've got uh, Councillor Walker, Matua Kake and four others. Questions? Hi there. Uh, so I'm just looking at um, attachment A and there's a bundle of graphs, and within the graphs, there's a bundle of numbers, but there's no indication of what the numbers represent. I'm assuming that the numbers represent number of actions or the like, is that correct? Okay. And my further assumption is that those number of actions relate to um, specific um, items that underpin this. So is that information available? So it's possible to, you know, track back and look at the number of items in a particular local board area and then to see what they are? Um, through the Chair, thank you for the question. Uh, the attachment B has got the full list of actions in it. Okay, so those actions relate to the numbers yeah, that it's are Exactly A. relate. So the graphs are drawn from that basically the, um, that action plan's been ingested into an Excel sure. sheet and the graphs have spat out and gone into the um, presentation. Okay, okay. Um, the other um, issue that I'll raise is really just endorsing the comment that my fellow councillor made around the sale of the Arewa offices, which would have made a wonderful library, plenty of parking, incredibly cheaply. So um, I don't know whether it was investigated to the degree that it um, would not could have been, but anyway, let's leave that. Uh, the other question I've got just goes to page, um, um, page 28, um, where we've got a, a scope of um, facilities, and it's identifying five type of community facilities, arts and culture, community centres, libraries, pool and leisure centres, and venues for hire. And the aspect that concerns me that I continue to raise is around the, um, the lack of a, a civic strategy on the part of council. The significance of that is that we are dismembering the civic locations of the legacy councils. So, for example, we've sold the Arewa council offices, which was the location that people within a wider community met to engage. Um, the only facility that we may be left with within the region may well be the Aotea Centre in terms of a civic um, gathering place for Aucklanders. And that's not always relevant when people sometimes want to meet locally around issues. Um, sometimes there are community halls that are available, um, but often they do not exist. So I'm just asking the question or raising the issue that there's another component that's actually inherent in this uh, list 
that is a very traditional component. It goes back thousands of years to village squares, community places for, for, for people to meet, to gather. It goes to civic strategies that go to civic education, people voting, a whole range of things. So I'm um, just raising that issue with um, officers. Is there any consideration around, um, uh, around that in, um, in how we prioritise things and make decisions? Kia ora, through the Chair, thank you for the question. So the open space provision policy covers civic spaces, so that's outside the scope of this plan but is included within the open space provision policy guidelines. Thank you, Justin. Um, Matua Kake. Uh, kia ora, kōrua. Uh, just, um, I've got three quick, quick questions uh, to the Chair. The, um, and it's in the context of really, you know, when I understand that this is a progress report, you know, Cup 8, but it's also an opportunity to reset the thinking from my, from my perspective. And um, just um, one of the things I'd like to really hear from you is how will Māori needs and aspirations be realised through this action plan going forward? That's the first question. The second question is where in your facilities plan do you give effect to marae? I just heard my learned friend over there, Councillor Walker, talk about those four or five categories. Marae same fit concept. all of those. Same so, concept. So it's, like, it's the same kind of context of community versus, is, uh, or are we really talking about council owned? You know, council owned. So just, you know, when you put up a community facilities network plan, it's the katoa from my perspective. So let's let's uh, reset potentially. So so that's the second question. Where do you, where in your facilities plan do you give effect to marae? In support of the previous uh, item as well, in terms of the potential that we could uh, have through that. And um, the third question is, do you ever think marae might be considered in your facilities action plan going forward? Kia ora. Kia ora, through the Chair, and thank you for the question. Um, so currently the scope of the network plan is defined, as Tracy outlined earlier. I do acknowledge that I think last time we presented our progress report, I received a similar question regarding marae, and um, acknowledge that the answer at, at the time was pretty much the same as what I need to say now, which is it's not currently included within the plan. Um, I think really importantly, obviously, through the um, Kia ora Tamaki Makoto, the the emphasis on marae outcomes through that um, framework is definitely acknowledged and really important and um, the marae infrastructure fund gives the opportunity to support that marae development in that sense. Um, but the way in which marae is acknowledged through the plan um, perhaps can be considered more fully, I guess, in the next review rather than in the action plan progress report. So hopefully that won't be too far off and absolutely acknowledge there's an opportunity there. Hey. Sorry, Justin, the three that he asked, that's all covered in that response? I well, think so, but I'd like to check. There's yeah. perhaps something I've Yeah, kind of. It's, it, it's, again, it's the same old, same old. Puts us into that small uh, putia of uh, access to funds as they're dribbled out as opposed to a part of a bigger uh, plan in terms of, you know, when you compare the budget of libraries and the, and the maintenance, the upgrade and the rebuild compared to the, what's available in the Marae Development Fund, for example, we're not even on the same page. So mm -hmm. I'm looking to play the game a lot better in terms of advancing the interests of Marae and Māori in this, in this city. Kia ora, and thank you for the extra comment. Um, just like to note, I, I completely understand what you're saying, just like to note that this plan itself actually has no specific funding allocated to it. So um, in that regard, every case that we have to investigate, we then make the case for that investment. Um, so yes, but acknowledge your comment. Thank you. Copy. Uh, Councillor Hills, Henderson, and then Casey. Kia ora, Chair. Uh, just a quick question, I think I asked it last time, just on the, um, and it may be too specific, so I'm happy to meet separately, but um, the Onipotu Afina um, is not on council land and, and has had a long history of, um, it was North Shore who stopped giving them a grant, it's a bit um, confusing, but there is investigating proving the facility to address growth, but it, it seems a bit at odds with the Northcote Community Facilities study, I guess, and what's happening with Panuku and Kainga Order and everything there. So I just wonder, it, yeah, it's not, it doesn't receive council funding, it's not on council land, it's not really providing a council 
related service. Um, I, I assume you've been working with the local board on that, but I, I don't have visibility over that. Just wonder if why it's in here like that. Uh, kia ora, through the chair, thank you for the question. It's correct, we acknowledge it is a bit of an anomaly in the action plan and um, just bearing in mind that the initial action plan was adopted in 2015 and some of these actions have carried through. Um, but to just go back to the um, one of the earlier responses which is around looking at network provision, now that we're looking at community needs um, in North Code in relation to library, arts and culture and community services, we are able to actually look at all provision and that's both council and non-council to think about a suitable response. So in that way we consider what services does it um, provide for the community um, rather than um, providing any clear any recommendations on behalf of the of MOE around that facility. We will be looking at the services it provides. And so any change to that would be assumed uh, approved by the local board if there was sort of a agreement or funding or anything like that, I assume. Um, uh, yes, uh, through the chair. So the project is being delivered and reported regularly to the local board so that they are definitely part of that process so that when decisions come to them they're fully briefed in terms of what the options are but it's quite early stages at the moment so um, it's the needs assessment is underway now um, and the findings from those needs assessments will be presented to the local board in due course. Cool, thank you. <coughs> Councillor Casey. <laughs> when Councillor Cooper asked a question earlier I feel like somebody was walking over my grave and I'm not yet in the earth. Um, institutional memory is a great thing. I support the Avondale Aquatic Centre and its new guys. It has my full support. I also have commitment after commitment after commitment from senior staff and resolutions at both committee and governing body level that say the Mount Albert Aquatic Centre is not fit for purpose and it will either be replaced on site or an alternative location found. That is within the Albert Eden Ward, Councillor Cooper, not the Avondale pool, because that will start that whole debate all over again. So I was looking, my question is, is there a senior staffer in the room who can commit to that? Because that's, that's what I understand to be true, isn't it, Councillor Fletcher? Come on, you're all there, Graham. If, if, if there's none, we can then take it to another Graham's committee. <laughs> It's not either or, it's both. It's not either or. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Oh, whoa, 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 hold on. He's, he's doing his, his jacket up. Watch out. Um, kia ora koutou, Pumare, Lloyd Takawingwa. Um, so, through the chair, in answer to the question, the investigations see that there would be... They do not overlap. They have separate catchments. Thank you. Um, Councillor Casey, is, is, is that your comment and question done as well? Thank you. Question, oh, His Worship the Mayor. Um, thank you, uh, Mr Chair. Um, I want to try and create some financial context for this because um, each one of us as ward councillors is putting their bit in enthusiastically as we expect them to do. Um, I'm trying to remember back to what we, the briefing we got um, from our, our finance team, what is the estimated shortfall in our total budget for the 10-year plan for the upgrading of work on the 350 community facilities that we're talking about? Do we have a figure for that, just so we get some reality into our conversations? Uh, kia ora, through the chair, thank you for the question. So we are bringing that advice to the workshop with finance and performance on the 28th of October as part of the long-term plan um, discussions. Uh, and we will be able to clearly signal then the funding gap that we have for our existing facilities and the funding gap that exists for our aspiration of new facilities. OK, can you give us a ballpark figure now? Rather than, you know, we'll be sitting on the edge of our chairs until the, the uh, end of October otherwise. Um, so we just... 
confirming those numbers at the moment, so I don't want to signal something <laughs> incorrect. <laughs> Everyone remembers a number once you mention a number. <laughs> yeah, OK. No, look, I've, it's um, eye-watering, though, and there's very many but we're, zeros. We're, we're talking about hundreds of millions, we right? Are. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Now, um, my second question is you've identified five areas here in your presentation requiring consideration through the 10-year budget. Does that mean they are your five priorities? I'm, try I'm trying to understand the context of what, you know, this is the Albany and Library, Lays Institute, Central Library, etc. cetera. Uh, through the Chair, thank you for the question. So those are the actions that have progressed um, far enough through a business case to conclude that investment in a community facility is required. Other actions have progressed and not come to that conclusion. So those are five instances of business cases where um, an option is for investment in a community facility, and they need to be considered through the long-term plan because funding doesn't currently exist for those facilities. So you've done the work, but they're not necessarily your priorities, am I? Uh, no, they are priorities, they are so they've priorities. been progressed okay. as priority okay. actions I'll, in the I'll plan. I'll try my luck again on this one, and I know we've got figures for some of them, because yeah. I recall the debate on the Central City Library. Mm -hmm. Can you just give us a bit of a, uh, an outline of what the capital cost in each one of those five items might be? Uh, so again, we we can do that at the workshop on the 28th of October. I feel like I'm being stonewalled. <laughs> yeah. So you're getting stonewalled in point of order. So apologies, but yeah, we've been asked to cover that at the workshop. So um, they they do vary significantly because they are different propositions for yeah. each of those items, um, and they are as the table I suppose is trying to outline. Um, they have very different drivers, so there's quite different considerations I guess for each of those items. I'll try it another way. Um, for, for, for each, for each um, hundred dollars of demand, how much have we got supply approximately, would you guess? I won't hold you to this, it's just a guess. Uh, I mean, have we got an, you know, are we, are we talking about our ability to do 10% of this, 20% of it, 50% realistically? Just to, I mean, I, I, I'm desperate to try to make sure that we don't all crowd in on you and say, we want this, we want this, we want this, knowing that, we're, you know, we want this, but we're going to get that. Yes. Um, so can you give us a bit of, bit of a, a, a sense of where we are on that? <laughs> that's, that's what I suspect, uh, Chair of the Finance Committee. But, uh, yes, kia ora through the Chair. Thank you very much for the question. Um, <laughs> th that is what we are going to be signalling, okay, okay. essentially, is the significant gap that we have in terms of our investment requirement and our aspiration yeah. um, compared to what we have to work with. So it, it's going to be a challenging conversation, but I guess that workshop is okay. the place where we're really keen to have that difficult conversation with you all. So my only comment is, Mr Chair, is um, let's make sure we keep our, our ambitions realistic here, um, because the truth is the, what we want is vastly in excess of what we're able to fund. And that we've just got to deal with that reality. So I will take you and um, Councillor Casey off the comments, comments list. So I've got Councillor Fletcher, Darby, and then Henderson, and then hopefully if there's any comments, I don't think there will be. Um, but if there's any, we'll go to that. So, Councillor Fletcher, thank you. Well, thank you. I mean, these these are, are, are difficult issues, and they were difficult before COVID. So, I want to just ask, in light of um, the two earlier questions you had, the weighting that we've put in the community on the local board priority being 15%, I mean, that, that is after you have identified using the earlier criteria. Um, I'm, I'm really interested to explore how those weightings will work because there are obviously, in a geographical sense, there are cluster areas and then there are local board areas. So it's just to try and drill down and understand how that will be applied by officers. You know, once you've identified there's a need for whatever it is, um, just how you, and I really don't want to see these up for debate today that the, because they've, they've all been accepted in the past, but just how, as officers, you will apply those weightings. Kia ora through the Chair, thank you for the question. So um, 
as you've acknowledged, the, our assessment of new actions, which is not part of the exercise that we've done in order to bring this progress report to you today, we do that on a three yearly basis when we review the action plan, um, the action plan itself. Uh, so when we do that, we do an analysis of the existing network. We then do an analysis of the expected or anticipated growth in terms of our network and the impacts. And then we seek to understand what the priority is for local boards in supporting any of those initiatives that we have identified as being required. So often those initiatives have already or are thought about by local boards as well, and this is our way of identifying that alignment with their priority. So I, th I think that that prioritisation and the methodology that has been already agreed and established is, is appropriate in this situation and I hope will to a degree depoliticise some of the decision making processes. Um, Councillor Darby and then Councillor Henderson. Thanks, Chair. Just um, one of the things I've been reading out of a big UK study on, you know, it was a study in response, it was by the government there, in response to the implosion of high streets, you know, the retail centres. And one of the things it recommended was agglomeration of, um, uh, you know, good retail, commercial office. Um, uh, but it went on to say you need to agglomerate uh, civic facilities and community facilities and government infrastructure, it needed to be around the centre. We've got, we sort of inherit sites, you know, and they're 800 metres from the bus stop or they're two kilometres from the bus stop and we, we, we tend to go and reinvest in those sites because we own them. Is there any thinking, any bold thinking saying, no, we need to cut our losses here? I mean, actually, Ori was a bit of an example of that. Um, it's not in the centre, and you need to support the centre. And probably a good reason we dispose of that is it's isolated from the centre. But can what you is there, is there is there Probably some right. um, thinking around just saying no? That's not appropriate to carry on investing there. We need to be out, and we need to be back to the centre. Kia ora, through the chair. Kia through the chair. So, um, yes, that thinking occurs within each of the investigations. Um, the first question is, what's the driver for the investigation and what is our current state environment? How does that need to inform how we look forward? Um, but I think it also goes beyond that in that um, we will be having this conversation on the 28th of October as well with you. That goes to the point that the, the points that the Mayor raised before around the scale of our network and how sustainable that is or isn't going forward. Um, so what we'd like to do is have a discussion with you then around what we think some of the options are around identifying um, how we need to think differently about moving on from some assets in order to create capacity to invest well in the ones that serve us well. So we'd like to have that discussion with you on the 28th as well. Yeah, no problems. I, I, I look forward to the 28th. Um, Councillor Henderson, hopefully to close the questions. Yeah, thanks And then much, we'll open up for comments. I tried to save some time, but I think I should actually ask my question. Um, so I'm, I'm conflicted both as a Waitakere Ward Councillor versus a Deputy Chair of Finance, and I wanted to reflect on the Mayor's um, views there. And I have to just point out before I get to my question, we have COVID raging in the world, we have a water crisis and a climate crisis. Those all could be very expensive. Um, as Waitakere Ward Councillor, I need to point out the huge under-provision both in the northwest currently, but also in growth within Red Hills, Hobsonville and Kumu means we're talking about over 100,000 people without access to a pool. That's not good enough. Um, so in advance of the workshop on the 28th, is the business case for the northwest available and can be circulated? Uh, so through the chair, I think at the workshop on the 28th, that will be incorporated in the advice from staff, and then the, um, the scheduling is for it to go to the local board in November, the full business uh, indicative business case, and then to this committee in December. That's all right. So, so you're, you're the first of the taxi rank, but I'm going to see if there's any others. Just you, Councillor Cooper. Mine was just a process issue. 
Um, and, and I'd really like to understand it and see if we can unblock this process. Um, Councillor Henderson and I want, and he was a previous chair of his local board, so when we're doing the business case for North West, we tried, we got a meeting with a staff member and they would not, they were so cagey. And I just wonder why, it was like, we're not allowed to tell the local councillor anything. Oh no, it's not coming. And then when we finally did get something, there's this bland thing of, it will go to the local board. Seriously, we get to make the final money decision, but it goes to the local board. I mean, surely we can be sharing with our councillors. You know, even if we have to keep it confidential, I just think this is supposed to be co-governance and the information flow goes one way. And I don't, I don't agree with that, so I'm just wondering whether we can be a little bit more open with the councillors in the local area. I'm sure all of you would appreciate that. This is not just the, um, what's the word, <sighs> territory of the local boards. Yep. They get all the input and we just go, no, you just pay the bill. So I'd like a little bit of input, and I think all of us would. So I hope in future that if we ask for a meeting with the staff working on these business cases, that we can actually be allowed in. Yep. It would help frame our decision-making a lot better. Okay, Thank then. you. Yep, taken on board. It's been moved and seconded. Oh, do you want to comment as well if there's, um, for, for your noting? Yes, or yours? Yep, if, if you just... Sorry, I got sweaty palms there for a moment, and I don't do that very often, but whew, big moment in life. Um, so, pers pursuant to the standing order 1.8.6, I've requested my um, assenting vote to be recorded, noting I object to the Project 135, the Central West Aquatic and Leisure, having status pending instead of programmed, which means I'd like it programmed versus pending, and I have checked that with the staff. So that's just a note. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. That's all right. So just a noting. Um, so I will put the recommendations. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Thank you so much. Okay. And um, Mr Paul, you can stay there, uh, sir, and you can introduce your colleague when our two ladies uh, depart. So thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. Um, and, and just to the committee for your information, um, it's seven minutes past 12. We will break at 12.30. I want to get through the whole agenda by then. Um, so, look, I'll, I'll just hand it over uh, to, to this particular one. So um, this is our Duda's Beach one. And um, De Deputy, yeah, Deputy Mayor, if you want to move. Pardon? Anybody? Um, just... Yeah. So, uh, Deputy Mayor and Councillor Walker. Sorry. I'm oh, happy to second. Yeah. Councillor Fletcher. One from the left and one from the right. Um, so, look, um, it, it's, now, it's now put on to uh, the table and please introduce your colleague. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. 